In 2012, two Charlottesville architects were tasked with designing a replacement for the Belmont Bridge. They were given three objectives, make it iconic, make it a gateway, and put the pedestrian first. This is their design solution. The first part of their job was to sift through the results of Project Gateway, a design competition that resulted in 36 bridge alternatives. The winning entry, in three separate votes, was the No Bridge Solution. But since an at-grade road crossing was deemed impossible by city staff, another solution was proposed, going under the tracks. An engineer was consulted and the underpass was designated as a feasible approach. The underpass is a street like many others in town, lined in trees, walkable, bikeable, and handling two lanes of traffic, with a turn lane. In its current design, it's 66 feet wide with five foot sidewalks. The five foot dedicated bike lanes on each side make it an idealized multimodal scenario the rest of the city could emulate. The well-engineered dynamics of the underpass topography also allow for greater multimodal connectivity. Three pedestrian crosswalks and four stairways provide ample access at every intersection, even during pavilion events. The south end of the street slopes downward at roughly 8 degrees, a typical slope here in Charlottesville. The north end slopes upward at about 9 degrees, roughly the incline of Levy Street just to the west. These dynamics are made possible by the use of raised, thin, innovative road surfaces for the streets above. Where Old Avon, the railroad tracks and Water Street pass overhead, attractive stone buttresses alternate with light wells illuminating the underpass. Beyond these, the west side of the street features a gently rising, retaining stone wall. On the east, an open sloping green with decorative plantings. The design calls for 50 mature street trees, providing a living fabric of shade, a significant environmental alternative to what would be a tree barren bridge. It also affords public plazas, pocket parks, meeting places, and an opening of the views to the nearby mountains. Water Street, as an approach to City Walk and Woolen Mills, is freed from the shadow of the former bridge. To accommodate stormwater, rain gardens would be planted at either side of the underpass. At its center, a million dollar emergency pumping station would handle the remaining runoff and prevent flooding during major storms. Adding to the simple elegance and pragmatic dynamics of the underpass design, the architects added a signature element not called for in the brief an iconic pedestrian and bicycle bridge spanning from Belmont to downtown, not only putting the pedestrians first, but elevating them, providing them with an exhilarating experience, inviting them to walk, meet, and enjoy the mountain views. A true gateway moment. This canopy bridge would also provide easier access to the downtown mall during pavilion events via steps down and around the transportation center. At night, the illuminated pedestrian bridge would be a focal point for evening activity. The underpass, too, would provide safe, illuminated 24-hour access between neighborhoods for cars, bicycles, and pedestrians. But the benefits here are beyond aesthetic. This design solution would also provide economic growth by freeing up valuable real estate in the vicinity of the bridge footprint land that the bridge made largely inaccessible and undesirable for over a hundred years, coupled with the suggested elimination of Old Avon, a redundant spur road, whose removal would simplify the current five-way intersection at Levy Street. Already, local interests are envisioning how this raw, urban space could be holistically developed to blend the scope and size of downtown businesses and Belmont residences, incorporating contemporary ideas and urban living. One idea is an innovation zone for art and technology. Note that the potential for economic vitalization here is maximized by the low profile of the underpass and the elimination of the barrier road bridge matched with the iconic placemaking of the pedestrian bridge. Greenville, South Carolina is anchored by what Forbes magazine calls one of America's best downtowns, featuring an identical floating pedestrian span called Liberty Bridge, built in 2005, which serves as a major tourist destination and Greenville's signature postcard setting. 
The city estimates a minimum of 1 million tourists have visited since it opened, sparking a $65 million development consisting of plazas, residential units, retail shops, offices, artist studios, and restaurants. Potential private investment in the immediate area could reach 10 to 20 times the public investment. As appraised by Barton Mallow, the underpass is estimated to cost $27.3 million to construct. Seven million of this estimate is a contingency in case of unforeseen construction challenges. And note that a previous independent estimate has been made by civil engineers of $13.8 million for the project, outside of subsequent aesthetic enhancements. The pedestrian and bike bridge has been estimated separately at roughly three to four million dollars. Important also is to figure in life cycle accounting. According to DOT studies, a bridge requires 1% of its construction cost in repairs and maintenance annually for its 100-year lifespan. Essentially, you pay for it twice. For instance, an $18 million arch bridge is actually a $36 million arch bridge. Because the underpass has one quarter the span of the bridge alternatives, over its lifetime, it is arguably the cheapest proposal beyond the basic bridge option. Reduced maintenance costs, increased property values, and the intangible benefits of a more attractive, vital city make it an economically favorable design. Suggestions for sources of funding are the Commonwealth Transportation Board and VDOT as part of its six-year transportation plan. Funds are available also through the Federal Department of Transportation. The Transportation Equity Act provides federal funding for qualified pedestrian and bicycle projects. Bike and pedestrian safety projects are also eligible for federal HSIP funding. Zone design could be funded with Department of Transportation HUD planning grants designated for projects addressing housing, employment, and multimodal traffic. Perhaps the best funding opportunity is the federal TIGER grant program. The Department of Transportation invests TIGER funds in bridge replacements that not only exhibit acute need, but also incorporate broad multimodal goals in their design and reconstruction, as well as projects which increase economic opportunity and make it easier for Americans to get to jobs, promote neighborhood revitalization and business expansion, and reconnect neighborhoods that are unnaturally divided by physical barriers such as highways and railroads. Total construction time is estimated at 28 months, including a street closure of six months.